Hi everyone, in this screencast I'm going to show you how the night sky changes over the course of a year and I'm going to introduce you to a special line on the sky called the ecliptic. So you can see that I have Stellarium set up here. I'm pointed to the south and it's just around noon and the location is Andover Mass. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to move forward by days and show you what happens to the sun over time. The thing is, it's hard to see what's going on here with the sky on. And so I'm going to turn off the atmosphere so that you can see the sun relative to the background stars. And then I'll do this again. So watch what happens as I move forward through time. You can probably see that the sun is moving relative to the background stars. And it's passing by some planets, and they're moving too. And if I put on the celestial grid, you can see what's going on even a little bit more clearly. If you watch one of these squares in the grid, you can see that even as the days move forward, those stars are remaining fixed relative to each other, although they are moving from day to day. And you can see that the sun and the planets are clearly moving through the background stars. So I want to have you imagine what would happen if you drew a dot where the sun is every day and then you connected those dots. And what you would get would be a special line on the sky called the ecliptic, and I'm going to show you that now. So that red line that I have drawn on the sky is the ecliptic, and let me just fast forward a bit more going day by day. And you can see that the sun is indeed following that red line. And you can see that the planets are hanging out relatively nearby, also moving through the background stars. And let me show you one more thing. Let me put on the constellations here so that you can see the names of the constellations. And you'll probably notice something interesting. Notice that the sun is in Sagittarius at the moment. And as I move forward by days, it next goes into Capricorn and then Aquarius and then Pisces, and then it's headed into Aries. And uh, you will probably notice that what's going on here is that the sun is actually cruising through the zodiac constellations. There's Taurus and Gemini, Cancer, Leo, Virgo. And that's an interesting thing, and we're going to want to explain all of this. So what I want to do now is I want to use this diagram from the stars and how to see them by H.A. Ray. And use it to show you what's going on. So the diagram you see here should remind you of some of the celestial sphere diagrams that we've looked at, but there's a big difference here. This diagram is helpful in understanding how the Earth's rotation leads to the 24-hour motion of the night sky. In this diagram, you can see the entire Earth's orbit. And so this is going to help us to understand the yearly motion of the night sky. I want to pause for a minute here and just note how very badly out of scale this diagram is. Remember that the nearest star is about 4.3 light years away, which means it takes light 4.3 years to travel from the nearest star to our solar system. Meanwhile, the sun is about 8 light minutes away from the Earth, meaning that it takes light from the sun 8 minutes to travel from the sun to the Earth. So how do these compare? Well, 4.3 years is equal to 2,260,080 minutes. And so if you take the ratio of the time it takes light to get to us from the nearest star and the time it takes light to get to us from the sun, you get a factor of 282,510. And that means that if the distance from the sun to the earth in this diagram is about an inch, the distance to the nearest star, which would be the very nearest point of the celestial sphere, should be about 282,510 inches. And that distance is about 4.46 miles. Another way of thinking about it is that if that longer arrow that you see from the sun to the edge of the celestial sphere is about 4 inches, then the diameter of the solar system should be about 8 microns. And that's less than the width of a human hair. So if you imagine stretching a human hair out across the diagram, the solar system should fit into the width of that hair. So the diagram is badly out of scale. But the thing is, if we're going to understand how the 
sun moves across the background stars over the course of the year, we need to be able to see the celestial sphere and the solar system in one diagram. And so this is just the way it has to be. So what is this diagram helping us to understand? So here is the Earth in June, and here is the location of the sun. And from Earth, if you look at the sun, it will be located about here in the background stars. It's a little bit difficult to read this constellation name, but this is the twins over here, or Gemini. Now, the Earth's moving in its orbit, and so after about a month, it will have moved to here. And now you can see that the sun will appear to be in a different spot in the background stars. Now it's in the crab. And if you move another month along the path, it'll be in Leo, and then it will move on to Virgo. And you see what's happening here. Over the course of the year, the sun's location in the background stars moves, and this dotted line that you see here is the same line that we saw in Stellarium, that red line, and this is the ecliptic. And so the definition of the ecliptic is the line that the sun appears to take through the background stars over the course of a year. So now you can appreciate that that motion of the sun through the background stars is caused by the yearly orbit of the Earth. One more thing that I'd like to mention is that the planets all show up on the ecliptic as well. And it's worth thinking about what that tells you about the solar system. And I'll give you a hint. Do you think that the solar system looks more like this or more like this? If you don't know, you might be able to reason your way through to an answer by noticing that the planets mostly stay along the ecliptic. So this explains the motion of the sun through the background stars over the course of a year. But let me show you something else that's kind of interesting. Here we are back in Stellarium, and now I'm just going to change the time so we can see what the sky looks like at night. So here we are facing south again, and now you can see that I've changed the time to something that's very close to midnight. So uh, notice that it is the 27th of September, and I'm going to change that in a minute. And let's also notice that Capricorn is located right about here. And now what I want to do is I'm just going to fast forward through by days and let you watch how the sky evolves over the course of a year. So as you can see, uh, each night that goes by, the sky that we have access to changes slightly. Here's Orion, which is a beautiful winter constellation, and you can see that on December 1st at around midnight, Orion is relatively high in the sky. And then as the days go by, Orion kind of moves across the sky. And by February, it's closer to the horizon at midnight and, you know, it goes on. But then other things come into view. And so we'll just keep going here until we get all the way back to the beginning. And you can see different things uh, come into view here. And finally, as we come back around, you can see Capricorn is back to its original position. So let's look at the Earth in June. And if the sun is here, what part of the Earth is going to experience nighttime? Well, it's going to be this side of the Earth. And actually, I'm making an attempt with that arrow to point at my location right now, which is 42 degrees north latitude. So from this location, the axis of the Earth is still going to point to the north celestial pole. And this is going to be the line of my horizon. And this is going to be the direction of the zenith. Now remember, this diagram is badly out of scale. That solar system should really be less than the width of a human hair at the center of this diagram. And so what I need to do is I need to move these arrows over here to make sense of what's going on. So the part of the sky that I would have access to at midnight in Andover would look something like this. Remember that the line from the horizon to the line that goes to the North Celestial Pole should be equal to my latitude. And so that angle there should be 42 degrees. And this is what the sky is going to look like at around midnight. But remember that over a 24 hour period, the earth rotates. And so the sky that an observer at this location would have access to would change over the course of the night. As the earth rotates, that blue shaded region that you see 
would also rotate around that blue arrow that points to the North Celestial Pole. You may be able to see that the one part of the sky that should be visible throughout the night is that pink region up there. And of course, that's the circumpolar region that you're familiar with. So now let's think about what happens at a different time of year. So let's go over to December, and now an observer at 42 degrees north latitude at midnight would be located right about here. So the axis of the Earth is still going to point to the North Celestial Pole, and the horizon for this person is going to be right about here, and the zenith is going to be in this direction. So once again, recognizing that the scale of this diagram is all out of whack, I need to imagine where the solar system would be if I shrunk it down to smaller than the size of a human hair, and that would put it over here, and then I can draw in the rest of the sky. So this is the part of the sky that an observer at 42 degrees north latitude would have access to at midnight in December. And remember once again that the Earth will be rotating over the course of 24 hours, which means that this blue shaded region will rotate over the course of the night. And over the course of the year, you can imagine how the part of the sky that's visible at midnight will change as the Earth orbits the Sun. So I hope this video has given you a sense of the importance of the ecliptic and has also helped you to make sense of some of the things that you're seeing in Stellarium. The next step will be to use this diagram to help us to understand the seasons, and that will be the subject of the next screencast.